Very early on in the Reliquary's development process, we decided we wanted to do something that was a steampunk theme. There's a thing that'll, that'll sometimes bother me when it comes to just like vague steampunk aesthetic where people will just like throw gears on things. And I don't think you should have a gear on something if it doesn't look like it's doing a job. And I think that that is something that could be done very well by the group of people involved here because of being very detail oriented. Then as we started actually developing it further, it evolved into something that was a little more fantasy tinged and it became this kind of collection of artificer contraptions. When I was talking earlier about being excited to do something new, the artificer stuff, this is it's a little different from anything we've really done before. I always like mechanical things, you know, I want to try to think of like what it would do if it actually was a real thing. This is one of my favorite series to work on because it feels more sci-fi and, you know, more steampunk. I think sometimes people don't realize how much thought goes into some of the little details, you know. I have really strong opinions about all this stuff and I probably, you know, obsessed about it too much, but there's reasons behind everything. And sometimes they're, they're a little hard to articulate, they're just kind of like an artistic feeling, but it's fun to actually get a chance to try to express it. Eli goes a little too far with the logic, <laughs> but I appreciate it. Like, sometimes we just have to be like, Eli, magic exists. <laughs> it does. <laughs> when I was working on Artificer, early on I saw a lot of steampunk art and illustrations where a lot of the time they would have a worn metal um, and I like the idea of a very bright vibrant color next to a very subdued weathered piece of machinery. I could have incorporated the same exact color scheme but I kind of wanted each piece to be its own identity. I really wanted to highlight the mechanical nature of it. But it was really for me to test a, an idea ahead of sculpting and then in a very different way. I got to like design the mechanical aspect of it on the computer and then combine that with traditional sculpting afterwards. Not being able to see the thing in real volume is difficult. It's supposed to be like a puzzle box kind of like a mechanical contraption that you figure out the things and then it'll open up the arms and grab the artifact that it's keeping locked inside. So the idea was that like back it can uh, you can see all the mechanisms that control all the arms down the front. You can see like the puzzle uh, mechanical elements to it. For the Enigma Smiter, originally I found a piece of machinery that was mostly like this red coppery metal. But I was like, I think it would be cool if the spider was predominantly this red rust color. So my first draft of that was mostly red and it, to be honest, it kind of looked like a Star Wars <laughs> creature. Like it was very striking and it was a little bit too much and it didn't really relate to the other two. So I toned down the red a lot and then I painted over parts of the red with more of the metallics. And I also incorporated the turquoise and orange on the same spheres that occur on the furnace. So there's going to be a hose connecting this tank, which is just getting started, to this die cradle here. So we've got a couple pieces of, of wire stone, which is, as we all know, a powerful magical substance. It can hover in space. We'll have those just apart enough to create a little bit of electronic feedback. It's good to have some idea of what this what the thing does because it, it it makes it more interesting. You can think about, all right, well, if we're trying to suck energy out of this magical old eye, you know, well, maybe it, you need to adjust the angle of it depending on where the moon is because you do this by moonlight, obviously. So you need hinges and you need gears so you can adjust that. And then the various runes here around the edge, say in, in one of the scripts of, you know, probably, I don't know, Bytopia, um, that it's, it's a containment force, so you, it won't spill out. It all is focused downward. It just makes the sculpt more interesting, and then there's a reason for it. Um, and so even though it still looks like a crazy contraption, it feels like it's got some coherence, I think, that sometimes if you're just like, I'll make a thing and stick gears on it, uh, what does it do? I don't know. I mean, that's okay, but it's more interesting if there's a story, so. I was like, this one seems like it's very like sharp and dangerous. I've actually found old machinery online and there was one that was like made of iron oxide um, pieces. It was very shiny metallics next to uh, like worn out metals. And that's what I incorporated in this piece was I used matte finish medium that I mixed in with the paint. And I also used this paint called Micaceous Iron Oxide. Um, and then from there actually I had originally painted the crystal to be similar to the Wildlands Wyverstone. 
and it was just kind of reading too dark overall like it's missing the turquoise from the furnace let me make it just like a very magical crystal um, that's being charged I'm going to shave this down uh, so it's smooth and it's going to get a thin skin with a sort of hammered texture over it and you'll see through in here into where this um, where this grate goes so that's where the light will shine out and there'll also be this tank on the side which will which will bubble with unearthly lights and then these arms which were which were inspired by um, the style of um, planet-like globes, you know, in a rotating thing. And it, it, it became less and less orrery-like and sort of turned into a, a portal furnace. And um, so what I'm going to be doing is I'm, I'm decorating these arms with uh, various sort of runic shapes, uh, focusing the power on the celestial spheres. I love making runes and creating imaginary scripts and such. These little bits have that a little artistic flair that it's not it's not perfectly uh, smooth and perfectly interconnected they mean something arcane that probably doesn't pay any attention to the rules of mechanisms i think these were forged right onto the surface by some little old gnome little old norm gnome with like impressive forearms so i kind of knew that starting with the furnace i wanted to make it bronze most likely and then I wanted to incorporate turquoise somehow. Uh, and then as I was painting the piece, I was like, hmm, maybe it'll be a little bit too much if I incorporate the turquoise into uh, the spheres that are on the front and back of this. Orange is kind of like, it gives the artificer kind of like a quirky alien, like kind of odd vibe for me. These all felt like very interesting in their own way, but they also related to each other. And I kind of like created a story in my head as to what these things, the little vessels are. So there's like four of the Enigma spiders and they're kind of like the scavenger collectors that go around like the desert and they collect this element that's like the turquoise canisters and then they heat it up and like charge it and then they throw it in the furnace to like make some kind of like chemistry element. So yeah, I just made up like a little thing to like relate the color to each other and like what was going on just for fun. You know, that's kind of one of my things as a DM is I usually look at pieces and I say, what kind of story can I tell with this? And that's really unique about these things is that they already have such a strong story. That kind of adds this fun level of being at the table again. Because that's that's sort of what our past year has been without is like be really being at the table again. And I think it's kind of a celebration of that. 